Reading the New Testament, we come across references to Christians gathering in people's homes. The idea of a house church sounds relaxed and informal, but was it? We're going to take a look at the historical house church today, also taking a quick look at what it means in our day and age to have the church in our homes. When Christianity started, it was not a popular religion. Christians were hated by the Jewish, Roman and Greek citizens around them, so they had to meet in secret places, often in the catacombs, and many would meet in the private houses of members of the Christian church. Reading the verses about house churches at first glance, it seems a very relaxed form of Christianity, far away from the schedules of services, the architecture and the structures of churches today. It seems like an easy, laid-back version of Christianity, that people would gather in a home, maybe sing some songs, hear a sermon, read some scriptures, talk and have fellowship, and that that would be church. It might be perhaps a nice thought, but it isn't the truth. We have seen in previous episodes on the Didache or on Ignatius that the early Christians were already organized. They already had a sense of ritual and spirituality that was distinctly Christian. And the house church is yet another example of this. Very early on, the Christians had an idea of sacred space. Notice the specifics in the verses. When Paul mentions the church in your home, he isn't actually saying that to everyone to whom the letter is addressed. He's saying that to specific people, Philemon and Aphia, Aquila and Priscilla, Chloe and others. These were wealthy members of the Christian community that not only had the space in their home for regular meetings of people and gatherings and fellowship, but the space in their homes to set the space aside for Christian worship. They didn't have church gatherings in their homes. They had literal churches in their homes, rooms set aside specifically as gathering places for Christianity. These house churches were on the outside just a normal home and they were used that way for centuries. When Christianity was eventually legalized, these churches would become church buildings from the outside as well. A 5th century Byzantine church was unearthed in Capernaum in the 1960s. It was built on the ruins of St. Peter's house, the Apostle Peter. Jesus had stayed there and Christians had worshipped in Peter's house, which had then become the church at Peter's house. It is one of the oldest places of worship in Christianity that we have ever found. And right from the very beginning, we have proofs that the Christians were already engaged in a very ritual, liturgical understanding of Christian faith and the use of beauty in the service. For instance, during the reign of the Emperor Diocletian in the third century, there was a profound movement to persecute the Christians. And Roman records from the city of Serta in North Africa talk about a raid conducted by the Roman authorities on a Christian house church. The document just spells out the different things confiscated from this community. Amongst them were two golden communion chalices, silver cups, bronze candelabras, bronze lamps, beautiful things. There were even clothes and shoes, possibly ceremonial outfits or even baptismal garments, right there at the very beginning of the church, in the age of persecution. An archaeological dig at Dura Europus in modern-day Syria unearthed a house church that once again showed that continuation of practice. This house church was full of imagery, early Christian iconography. They even found an amphora, or a Roman wine bottle, that had a verse from the Didache engraved on it. It was the verse in the Didache that deals with the Eucharist, and it is quite possible that this amphora contained the wine that would eventually be used by those Christians for Holy Communion. And this was a house a home that had been converted from the inside into a church and from the outside looked like a normal dwelling place. Other house churches discovered even in recent years have shown the same amount of care, the same presence of iconography, the same concept of sacred space, rooms set aside for baptisms, for education, rooms set aside for celebrating the Eucharist, rooms set aside for Christian fellowship. Right from the very beginning, Christianity has been conducted with a care, with patterns, with things that help us grow in our relationship to Christ, things that help reflect the heavenly kingdom here on earth. As time progressed and Christianity found new freedoms, churches were able to be built that were dedicated right from their very construction to be places of worship for God. And now most of us in the world today, but not all, have the honor and the privilege of being able to go to a building that has been dedicated and set aside from the start as a place where we can worship, where we can pray and we can gather with communities of Christians. But what of the church in our homes? What does it mean to bring the church 
into the places where we live. There are simple ways that we can do this, things like blessing the meals that we eat, or once a year in the Orthodox tradition, for instance, we bless the entire home that we live in. And the blessing of the home is technically a service that started in church and has continued into our home. We connect the place that we live with the place that we gather to worship and pray. We also mindfully decorate our houses with beautiful things, with icons and crosses, things that remind us of our faith. In Orthodox homes, for instance, you'll see an area that we commonly call the icon corner. It's a spot that is set aside as a place for prayer, a place where we can come to and just focus on God. In this spot, we'll generally have a few icons, maybe a candle, a bunch of prayer books, and of course, the Bible. This is a spot where we can gather once or twice a day to say prayers, to read the scriptures, to read the scriptures that the whole church is reading on that day according to the calendar, so we can connect with the entire body of Christians around the world. And of course, as you pass by the icon corner, as you pass by the icons around your home, you are able to remember to keep maintaining that fellowship with the saints and that relationship with Christ that we do our entire lives wherever we are, not just in the home. Standing at the icon corner reminds us in a busy world to take Christ's words seriously, to go into that secret place, that quiet place, and focus on God, to speak to the Father. And of course, don't forget the small tiny home that you carry around with you. And that is yourself. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And in each of us, there is a small quiet place in our soul where we can go to despite the noise around us and talk to God. And that is the heart of the Christian home. Thank you very much for watching and for inviting us into your home by watching Patristics. Thank you all for the support you've given the channel. Uh, just a reminder that if you would like to help us out with the channel by buying us a coffee, as it were, then there is a link in the description where you can do that. Uh, we say buy a coffee, although we'd rather it say tea, but you know how it is. In regards to the tea that is being drunk today, it is Robos, Vanilla and Raspberry. And I love robust tea. I recommend it to anyone who wants to have a strong tasting tea that's not black tea because it has no caffeine. And this mix with raspberry and vanilla is really nice. It's the first time I've tried it and I do recommend robust tea in different variants to anyone.